Hi, this is Jim with uh, CableSupply.com and today what we're going to demonstrate is how to fish a, uh, a drywall so you can put in a low voltage jack and we're going to deal with two different types of drywalls. We're going to deal with the normal commercial metal beam drywall and we're also going to deal with the uh, wooden 2x4 drywall. Now what we've set up here in our demo is we have a, a metal frame wall that mimics exactly how the walls are in, in commercial settings. And we also have a wooden frame wall uh, that we're going to demo, uh, which is differently, it's cabled differently. And you'll find this also sometimes in commercial settings, but you'll find it mostly in homes. So uh, join me today, and we'll go through all the details on how to cable and how to fish wire through a wall. Okay, the first wall we have here is the metal wall, and this is how a metal wall is constructed in uh, mostly commercial buildings. Um, so it has drywall in there, but it has these metal 2x4s, and uh, this is the easiest uh, wall to fish. And obviously we have the drywall off in the back, but we have it on the front. And so we're going to show how you, you fish wire down uh, one of these walls. The first wall we're going to demonstrate on uh, is the metal wall, and what you want to do is you want to uh, take your, come on down here closer, cameraman. You want to take your uh, your low voltage um, bracket, and and low voltage by code does not need to have a box in the back of it. So uh, when you deal with 110 voltage um, by code, it's always metal, and uh, it's going to have a backing to it. It's going to be a little box um, rather than a bracket like this. But with low voltage, there's no no possibility of it to start a fire. So all you need is something to, to attach a, a faceplate to uh, so you can put your jack in there and have some sort of stability. And what you want to do is you want to measure the distance from the bottom to the bottom of the jack of where it is everywhere else in the, in the room. In other words, you want this jack to be at the same level as the 110 outlets or the other jacks uh, that are in the building. So we're not going to measure today because this is a fake wall. It's just for demo purposes, but it's usually around this, this height. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, it's called an MP1, and we do sell this on CableSupply.com. And the first thing you want to do is you want to line it up to where it's basically level. And then you want to um, uh, mark off the corners with your drywall saw. You can buy one of these drywall saws from um, Home Depot or something like that. So I'm going to mark off the corners here. four corners. Are you close enough so you can see that David? Okay. You see the four corners are marked off. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go horizontally, um, not vertically. And the reason why is if there's a stud in the way I want to hit the stud first. And I don't want the vertical lines and then have to move over and create another vertical line. So I want to go horizontally first. So I'm going to start here. See that? I ran into a stud. So I have a problem there. And the way you solve that problem is, is you take your your jack again and you corner it right there. And then you have your four new holes. So now I can turn it around. push it through. And I take my MP1, I push it in here. Sometimes you have to adjust it. If you didn't make the, the hole big enough, you're going to have to adjust it. And this is the case. It doesn't have to be tight. And as you can tell, the hole is not exactly square or anything else. This really covers up a lot of mistakes. Some people ask, why don't you use routers? Well, the reason I don't use a router, and I've been doing this for 20 years, is because I got to carry the router all over the place, um, and the routers cost money. I can leave this at a job site; it's only worth a couple dollars, and it's, it only takes just as long to use a uh, a, uh, a drywall saw as it does a router. 
Now if your outlet's not straight, this is a time to adjust it using your drywall saw, cutting off a little more, a little less. And remember, your plate's going to be pretty wide, so it's going to cover any mistakes you make. But if you just leave this on here, just pushing that metal back like that, this will, this will eventually get pretty loose. So what you need to do, and come in here close, um, camera guy, what you need to do is you need to take pliers, and you need to connect it right there, and you need to squeeze and push down. Now I'm squeezing and I'm pushing down. And then I'm again pushing back. Squeezing that. And then it really tightens that thing up. Next thing we're going to use is our fish rods. Okay. And uh, these are fiberglass rods. And we usually use the longer ones, these are shorter ones, they're easier to handle. You can just sell them. And if you look real close, you can see that they screw together. What you want to do is, if you're on top of the wall, you want to push the rod down. Why don't you go on the other side, walk around the other side and see how the rod drops down. You want to drop this rod down. And again, because both sides are covered, you can't see where this rod's at. So you just push your hand in there and you lift it up a little bit. bring it through. Now what you do is you take your cable and a little bit of electrical tape. It's probably pretty obvious at this point what I'm going to do. Okay. What I'll do next is I'm going to be pulling this down. Now at this point a lot of people make a, a, a crucial mistake. They don't leave enough wire here uh, to connect to your jack, it becomes difficult, it takes more time. What I have as a rule of thumb is that when I cable here, I want to go out about that far, about two feet. So what I do is I take it out with my, uh, when I'm sitting next to the wall, it should come out right where I'm comfortable with my hand. That's the minimum. Um, you can go a little bit further, some people do. They take it out to the end of their reach. And uh, a lot of this is going to be uh, cut, it's going to be scrapped, sometimes it's damaged on the end. Sometimes when you punch down the jack you find out it, it didn't certify right, so what you need to do is cut a little more off and it gives you room to work with. It also gives you room that when you're punching down the jack, uh, you, you can actually reach the floor so you can push on it rather than doing it in your hand, you know, holding the jack and punching, punching down this way. So you want to leave about that much room coming out of the wall. And at this point, if you're in a new building and they're cabling and they haven't painted the wall or put the surface on the wall yet, you just wrap it up like this and you just leave it right there. And then when they spray the wall, they're not going to spray your faceplate and jack. Uh, the next thing I want to show you is, is a blue box. And the reason you use blue boxes, that's what we call them anyway, cut-in box, is you use this for wall phones. So, you know, if someone's hanging up a wall phone, they're pretty brutal in these little uh, P-rings uh, down here, David, the little P-rings uh, that we have won't hold up uh, with constant hanging up phones. Uh, they're only good for surface jacks. So what you want to do is you want to install this on a wall, and usually wall phones are right about at shoulder level. So you cut a hole in the wall about this level. Obviously, we didn't build this wall high enough to do that. Uh, but anyway, you install the wall jack, and the way you do it is, obviously, you just turn it around, you outline um, where you need to cut, and, and you don't want to cut above this, you want to cut outline there so this grabs. And then when you push it through, it slides through the hole, and then when you start turning this with a screwdriver, this will flip up, and as it tightens, it tightens up against the wall. And that's what you do your wall jacks on. 
once you put them in they do not come out. Now there's an exception to both of these uh, type of installations and that is if this wall is a firewall then you do need to use a metal box and in some uh, places the code actually requires you put fireproofing around the metal box. Um, but in this case this is a non-firewall and so uh, that's what we're showing you and that's going to be 99% of your installs are going to be non-firewall. Thank you for watching our videos. Remember, everything that we demonstrated in the videos can be purchased through our website, and we'd really appreciate it if you do that because that helps support these videos. Again, visit our website, www.cablesupply.com. That's www.cablesupply.com. Thank you.